Did Putin's arrest of a WSJ reporter follow Biden's Griner swap? McCarthy's retort is presented below. The release of Russian FSB agent and arms dealer Viktor Bout was the result of months of tense negotiations between the Biden administration and the Russian government. On Friday, U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy demanded that Russia release detained Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich, who has been imprisoned on espionage charges. According to Fox News Digital, he said that the prisoner swap orchestrated by the Biden administration to free WNBA star Brittany Griner may have encouraged Moscow tyrant Vladimir Putin. McCarthy, our caliph, demanded that Russia free the American journalist of Russian ancestry. He continued, it just shows what Putin is doing. In a high-level prisoner exchange with notorious Russian arms dealer Viktor Bout, also known as the Merchant of Death, Russia released American WNBA star Brittany Griner in December of last year. Griner is a two-time Olympic gold medalist who was imprisoned in Moscow on drug charges. U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said on Fox News on Friday that Gershkovich, a 31-year-old WSJ reporter whose parents emigrated from the Soviet Union, is a U.S. citizen and has a right to be working in Russia. This is a journalist who has a right to do their job. And for Putin to try anything else, it shows how deadly he is, McCarthy said. On Thursday, he pleaded not guilty in a Moscow court but he will remain in the Lefertovo pre-trial detention center until May 29. In 1986, KGB agents in Moscow arrested Nicholas Danilov, a reporter for U.S. News & World Report, on espionage charges. Following Vladimir Putin's ruling that Moscow has agreed to install tactical nuclear weapons on Belarusian soil, Ukraine has accused Russia of destabilizing Belarus and turning it into a nuclear prisoner. Eviction opposition leader Sviatlana Tikhanouskaya said this grossly opposes the desire of the Belarusian people and highlighted the country's growing subordination under Russian domination. The claims made by the Russian president that the move would not be in violation of non-proliferation agreements and would be compatible with similar accords that the U.S. has with some of its European allies were largely disregarded in Kyiv. In an interview, Oleksiy Danilov blamed the agreement for increasing public disapproval of Russia and Putin in Belarus. He is the top dog in charge of protecting the citizens of Ukraine. He said on Twitter that the Kremlin has Belarus in its grip. Mikhailo Podolyak, a top advisor to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, has also spoken out against Putin's strategy, calling the Russian leader too predictable. Podolyak said of Belarus's tactical nuclear weapons, I'm terrified of losing, and all I can do is scare people with tactics. Ona Lungescu, a spokesperson for NATO, has called Russia's nuclear posturing reckless and potentially catastrophic. NATO is monitoring the situation closely and is on high alert. Nothing has come to light that would necessitate a change in policy regarding Russia's nuclear posture. The claims Russia made about nuclear cooperation with NATO are totally untrue. Allies in NATO are reliable when it comes to keeping their word on the world stage. Russia has a history of breaking its word on arms reductions. Putin has frequently made nuclear threats or intensified nuclear language throughout the entire invasion of Ukraine. However, when Vladimir Putin announced his intention to deploy nuclear weapons to another country, it can be considered the first such attempt. The Russian leader said he was responding to talks with his Belarusian counterpart, Alexander Lukashenko, who, he claimed, had brought up the topic of nuclear deployment in Belarus for quite some time. Putin made another reference to the armor-piercing tank shells made of depleted uranium that Britain was ordered to deliver to Ukraine earlier this week. However, he primarily used the presence of some 100 U.S. nuclear weapons in Europe to defend the action.